Uh, just wanted to do a little bit of a, a how to use Visio, how to get started on Visio, and I thought as an example we could try and work out a circuit diagram, make a very simple circuit diagram, and uh, show the various pieces of Visio. So I'm assuming you've got Visio open. Uh, you could search for it on the Start menu and just Visio. And it opens up. There'll be a template if you haven't opened it before. There'll be a choice of templates here, um, and then it'll also show other. Once you load files, you can uh, load a previously loaded file. So let's go for the engineering template here. Gives me a bunch of choices for engineering. I'm going to pick electrical for engineering. So to make a circuit diagram, then I come over here and click the Create button. So I'm going to create an image. Uh, so I've got my toolbars on the side here, all my circuit elements. I've got the ribbon across the top. I'm just going to zoom in here so you'll be able to see the circuit elements a little bit easier. I'm going to zoom in on the corner of the document here. It's just going to make, when I put a circuit element over there, it's going to make it bigger. You'd obviously want to go to full screen to be able to get the best use out of your screen here. But Okay, so let's start with a simple, let's just make a simple circuit, a DC circuit. So I'm going to take my DC source, click down, drag it over, drags it in place. I can enlarge it. I've got drag corners on all the corners here. So I can pick any of the corners and make this bigger or smaller. Click just to move it around. So click on the dotted line or click somewhere on there to drag the thing around. This is a uh, rotate, uh, rotate the shape sort of button. But I wouldn't necessarily recommend that. Uh, there's other ways to rotate things, if, especially if you want to go with just um, uh, multiples of 90 degrees. So let's start with a simple DC source like that. Let's stick a resistor in here. So drag a resistor over. Now that's going to default to sideways. Well, I want to do a vertical resistor. So I could use this, and if I click this, I can drag this, and as I drag around, I get whatever angle I want. But And it sort of seems to lock in a little bit, but that's not going to be the perfect way. So I'm going to undo just to get back to regular. Okay, so the easiest way to, to, to rotate this just by 90 degrees, come up under the position part of the menu, part of the ribbon, under Rotate Shapes, and then you can rotate left or right by 90 for the resistor. I don't really care. So I'm going to rotate right by 90. Okay, so there's my resistor. There's my uh, power source. Um, it'd be nice to connect these together. So, of course, we come over to the connector. The connector is one that's going to have two ends to it. So there's an end there. Each of these elements have different points where you can connect things to them. So these two are nice, simple shapes. It's just one connector point on the end. So if I click down there, drag, and it's dragging open, then I get to my, there's my connecting point like that. Do another one on the other end. Connect here. Connect over there. So now I've got these things connected. Now what does that mean? Well, I'm going to go to the pointer tool. And if I take my resistor now, let's say I move it sideways, it's going to keep that connection. If I move the resistor in some other place in the circuit, it's going to keep the whole thing connected together, which is really nice if I want to rearrange things, but I don't want to have to redraw all those lines. So it's sort of an elastic connection that keeps track of where it is. Well, I've got a nice simple circuit. It'd be nice to be able to put some text in here, though. So for the resistor, maybe I want to call it R1 or something. So if I come over to the resistor and double click, I get a little text box there. And I can type in R1. Now that's really too small, right? We're not going to be able to see that that easily. So if I highlight that, or easier, come back out, go back in again, double click, it's highlighted. Now if I hover over it, I get the text area here, the font stuff, or up here. Here's the font stuff. So I can grow the font up here. I can shrink it. I can change the color. So now I've got a nice R1. Or I could even put in, well, actually, I'll put it in over here. Let's do the DC. And let's put in 10 volts DC. So then again, I can highlight that, Control A to highlight the text, or come back out, go back in again. There it's all highlighted. Now I can increase the font size on that. So now I've got a much nicer label on there for what's that circuit element there. Now I could make that V1 and make this R1 and then just put labels on the sides or in some other document, something like that. So one other thing that would be nice is if I had, let's say I had this circuit, maybe I had some other circuits. This thing right now is not connected together. I mean, it's connected, but it's not grouped together. And maybe I want to go and take this out and paste it somewhere else. So what I'd like to do is group all these things together. If I'm on my pointer tool here, I could select, click down in the lower corner, lower right corner, drag open a big rectangle, enough to enclose everything that's in there. We can go way way on the outside, that's fine. It's now selected all the different things, which would be this resistor, this circuit element, and that connector bar on the top, the connector bar on the bottom. Now I want to group them. So here's the group button. If I click that, I can group them together. So what I've done is I've created one group thing. Now I can 
increase or decrease the size of that, now that's just going to change the spatial dimensions. The text, notice the text doesn't get bigger or smaller in that sense. But I could move the whole thing around instead of, and now notice I can't move the resistor separately. Everything all comes together in one block. What's the benefit of this? Well, once I get the layout I like, I could then, having that selected as a group and all grouped together, if I right click, I get a copy, and I can come down, click over here somewhere else on the diagram, right click, paste, now I've got a second copy of this. And notice that it even tried to play nice with the other circuit. If I try to move this up, whoops, that's moving it in place. I didn't know it could do that. Oh, I see. When it copies it, that's interesting. When it copies it, it de-groups it or ungroups it. I guess I can still get to the group, but I can get to the individual elements. If I try to put this thing here, it's going to try and play friendly. It's going to try and show me that, look, I've got two overlapping wires, so I've got to try and find some way to to have them coexist. So, But if I'm over here, I've now got a second circuit, and so then I can play around. Maybe I want to ungroup this. So if it's grouped like that, I come back to this button, I can ungroup. Now they're individual things again. If I drag this, it's going to keep that elastic connection, but now I can change this or I can add something in. If I want to add something, what I do is get rid of that connector. Let's throw a capacitor in. Get a capacitor. Let's increase the size. Let's rotate it. So we're going to come back up under position, rotate, rotate, there we go. So now I've got two things to connect. So I'm going to connect here to there. Oops, I didn't drag. Click and drag, and then click here and drag there. Now I get a little bit of a kink in the line there. So if I took this capacitor and moved it up a notch there, I could, I could get that to even out. I could even slide this resistor down somewhat in there. Um, I could take slide the resistor over. And I get that kink, so if I come back just a little bit, I can unkink it. So we, sometimes we have to play around with um, uh, where we put these elements just to get it, if I wanted a nice box sort of outside circuit there. And again, I can come in here and say, here's my capacitor equals 4 farads or something like that. Highlight that text. A nice bigger font size on that. So now I took my original circuit. The other thing I could do is group these. So I've got my pointer tool. Group that. I'm only selecting what's there. Now when I group, I've got this whole new separate circuit. So what I did was I took my first circuit, made a copy of it to make an enhanced circuit. Now I can make a copy of this and go. So I could use this as a sandbox. I could keep going and make as many circuits as I want. The other thing I can do is if I right-click and copy here, whoops, that's a paste, undo, right-click and copy, I could then go paste this out into Word, paste it out into PowerPoint, paste it into something else, uh, to use for a presentation or something like that. So, uh, but that's a nice handy um, saving, you know, uh, creating elements, how to tag them together with the connectors, how to name them or change the the fonts, the colors on them. Um, and then when I save this, I want to save this page definitely. So I'm going to save as, and I'm going to say circuit circuit sandbox. So now if I come back in and I want to load a file, uh, if I look for recent files, I've got my circuit sandbox file. I can just call that up, add to it, make changes to it, um, and then go back to um, whatever, wherever I want to put these circuits into some other uh, documentation. So I've also got other shapes in here. So there's all kinds of shapes that we've got. There's engineering. So we can switch over to other types of templates that are here on the side, and they'll just expand or contract. We can... If I switch to switches and relays, then I'm seeing that. If I'm switching to transmission, I'm seeing those. So I could have all these different pieces that I could then access uh, to drag over into my working document. So just a, a simple little uh, uh, view of how to use Visio and how to create circuit elements and circuit diagrams within Visio. Because a nice professional-looking circuit diagram out of it. And this is a simple one, but you can see how you can make really complicated ones. Okay. Thank you very much.